Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I just finished a really cool project I wanted to show you guys. Uh, this involves two of my all-time favorite knives. So I just thought, you know, this would be a really cool thing to show you. So um, all this stuff is going to be going to John. And uh, John ordered, um, originally it was going to be, actually I don't know, I think we changed our mind like several times uh, before we arrived at the final, uh, the final design that, that you're going to see here. But anyway, uh, I'll start with the small stuff. So the first thing is a Leatherman OHT auto deploy auto collapse sheath. So you can see this is just my standard sheath. It's in black, obviously, riding on a tech lock. How this thing works is it actually engages the rail system on the side of your OHT so that as you draw, it actually pulls the pliers out for you. And then as you put this tool back into the sheath, it engages the buttons again and collapses them. So usually can get them to where they don't rattle much. There's not a lot of play. It has to be a little loose so that the tool can come out, but it's not really meant to be carried inverted uh, because of that. So you can easily carry it horizontal or vertical. I would definitely not carry it upside down um, as much as I'd love to be able to deploy the tool like that. There's just, if you make it too tight, it's difficult to, to actually get the pliers to, uh, well, the pliers will come out. It's difficult to draw the tool if you make it tight. So um, yeah, so this is what we have. Um, simple like this, get the tool out, make sure you pull with a little bit of speed and momentum and should be good to go. So, all right, there is thing one. Thing two is a piggyback sheath system for an SE Hungless and a Topps Camp Creek. Um, so John asked if I could piggyback these guys on a pair of large molly locks. You can see I have set this up. I'm just gonna give them this hardware here that you see embedded um, so that if he ever does wanna move the molly locks, he can do that. Why would you want to move the molly locks? It's a preference thing, really. Um, this is where I would have them right up here, nice and high, so that your knife feels balanced while it's riding on the pack. Uh, but maybe at some point you wanna carry it inverted, at which point I would definitely put the mollies down Toward the tip of the sheath you want the mollies to be up high and the weight to be dangling down rather than having a lot of weight stacked up above it and uh, feel like it's going to tilt over so uh, that's just my two cents there um, all right so the whole thing is riding on uh, on these mollies the color system color scheme that you're seeing here we have flat black on the hungless with od green basket weave on top of it got black for that Exotac fire rod holder and then the Camp Creek he wanted in chocolate brown. So that's what you're seeing there uh, I like this color combo a lot As far as what you're seeing here how this is riding on the uh, on the hung list This is what I call the universal tech lock adapter. It's a system. I invented that helps you to use uh, a small knife that has a tech lock on it or anything that has a tech lock on it already and you can put that onto uh, into the adapter. So the adapter works directly with the tech lock rather than working with the knife that you're carrying uh, as a piggyback. So the idea behind it is that if you have uh, this piggyback system and you don't want to carry the whole thing, um, maybe you just want to put it down in the campsite and just take this little guy with you uh, out into the brush, maybe you're gathering some kindling or something like that, um, you can easily just separate the two sheaths and immediately transition this to your belt. You don't need any tools. You don't need any kind of, uh, you know, hardware switch or time to do it. It's as simple as detaching it like so. Putting them back together, uh, it's a little bit difficult because this is meant to be very tight to hold your tech lock securely. Um, so what you want to do is <clears throat> you kind of have to put this at an angle like so. You can see that kind of fanned out angle. Basically, all I'm doing is turning this at an angle so that both of the feet of the tech lock can fit into this gap where my two fingers are. So you just got to turn it to whatever angle will make that possible. I also have this tilted away like so. And as I flatten, I'm going to show you the motion. As I flatten the sheath out against the small sheath against the big sheath, I'm also going to be turning it so that it lines up. So it's kind of this twist in motion. You're going to seat it. 
and then twist it down. Might take you a few tries to get the hang of it, but it's not so bad. So there you go. You can tell when it's flat against the back of that adapter, it's in. And then from there, obviously, you're just going to push that thing um, down until it bottoms out inside the adapter. So this system is very strong. It's very rugged. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it adds a lot of versatility. Case in point, if you wanted to, you could... Let's check it out. Maybe you don't want the Camp Creek on there. Maybe you want your, uh, your Leatherman. So anything with the tech lock on it, you can just switch it right over and immediately put it onto this system and then take it off and immediately put it on your belt. So it's a really cool, it's a really cool little setup. I will tell you it is difficult by nature to put this into and pull it out of the tech lock adapter. Um, if it's loose, there's really no point in having it. I mean, I like the idea of being able to quickly you know, very easily detach it. But <clears throat> the more I make these, the more I think it's important to make these, uh, you know, just really strong and uh, make sure that they're going to hold up to any abuse that you put them through. So it does take a bit of effort. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So speaking of effort, <coughs> the Camp Creek, if you guys aren't already familiar with this knife, um, this is a really funky shaped blade. So if you look at that, it's got that big belly up sweep on the spine, all that, and it kind of comes almost to, uh, well, I mean, it, I think it's technically a drop point, but it, it almost comes to like a Kephart um, at the end of it. It's almost symmetrical. So it's a, well, maybe it is. I'm not sure. I don't really know what you would technically call this tip. If you guys have any insight, definitely comment down below. Tell me what you think, or, or if you know for sure, definitely uh, school me up here. But... When you're making a sheath for a blade like this, you can't just press it because if you look, there's going to be kydex pinched together all in this section above the spine. So you have to do some kind of build out or blocking as we call it. Um, and in this case, what I did was I took two tongue depressors and I just kind of stenciled the shape onto them and then I cut them with a, an X-Acto knife and, uh, and put those on there too because that was the thickness I needed. And uh, yeah, I just kind of taped it on the blade and that gave the, when I pressed it, it gave the sheath the, uh, the impression of being, you know, it almost looks like a big drop point knife with a straight spine across the top. Um, so that's just something that's really important in the, uh, in the world of, uh, of uh, Kydex. I think you need to make sure that you block out your blades appropriately so that the draw is going to be nice and smooth. And, uh, Nothing is going to hinder that blade from coming out. All right, now the Hunglis. The Hunglis is among my top few all-time favorite knives. I don't know why I love it so much. I mean, I guess I do. It performs well. I think it looks great. It's a comfortable knife. Um, it's just one of my all-time favorites. If you guys haven't checked out the SE Hunglis, do yourselves a favor. Go get yourself one. Um, the Hunglis 2 is also pretty high on my list of uh, knives that I need to get. I have not actually had a chance to handle one yet, so that is going to be coming down the pike soon for me, I hope. There we go. Nice click in. There's no rattle. There's no play in this system, and both knives are in there nice and secure. At the same time, it's basically a ballistic one-handed draw. Uh, when you need this knife, I mean, for sure, vertically, the sheath is just going to fall right off, even if you're drawing it like that you can see how smooth that draw is same goes for the uh, camp creek it's got a little bit of a funky shape on that spine as we saw so there you go all right these guys are good to go and the last item that i have for you is uh we were we were talking about this sheath system nailing down the final details of it in an email and he sent me one and attached a picture of his uh, Dark Timber Honey Badger that he just got in December uh, with the, the DLT uh, Dark Timber Drop. So it just so happened that I also got one. And uh, so we got talking and he decided he wanted me to build him a sheath for his. So this is what we got. This is my knife. And uh, it's the first of, I've got three orders, including this one. 
uh, three orders for honey badger sheaths right now and in all three cases we're going to try using my knife to mold for their sheaths um, basically <clears throat> the reason why I say try is because while you might not visibly discern any difference in the um, in the dimensions of these knives from one to the next they are mid tech knives which means um, that they are partially production and they're partially hand finished so it's not it's not like uh, it's not like a shrade it's not like all these other knives that are 100 percent you know machined whatever and they might be sharpened by hand the handles and everything on this are partially hand finished that's why with uh, in particular something like bark river knives where you've got a partial production partial hand finished blade or, or overall knife I should say um, I usually require that the customer sends me their knife so that I can ensure that the fit is perfect. I have multiples of more than one Bark River. Uh, for instance, the Gunny, uh, the Gunny Hunter Sidekick is one of my favorite knives, and I have two of them. Well, my girlfriend has one; I have one. I can't use mine to make a sheath for hers. They will. They don't. They don't fit the same. It's the same model. They both have micarta. It's the same steel. Um, you cannot visibly discern a difference, but that little bit of, uh, of, of variation with the hand finish actually inf affects uh, a great deal how well the sheath is going to fit from one knife to the next. So with, uh, with these, I'm nervous that that's also going to be an issue. If it turns out to be an issue, he's going to have to send me his dark timber, but uh, at least the sheath will be, you know, obviously finished. So it'll just be a matter of changing the retention on it to make his knife work. So that's what we got coming up. Uh, I just wanted to throw that out there for you guys in case you have a dark timber or uh, for that matter any you know high-end hand finished knives uh, that I also happen to own. I generally do not like to use mine to mold for the sheath. It's not that I don't like to use my sheath or my knife to mold because I've made sheaths for all mine. I just really don't want to deal with a lot of shipping back and forth and having you guys be unhappy because things don't work the first time. Um, and that's just something that's out of my control as far as the fit goes. So, okay, I'm sorry I rambled an awful lot there, but I wanted to make sure it was, you know, well understood what I'm trying to say here. Trying being the key word. All right, so what we have here, he asked uh, for me to make him this sheath. We've got another Exotac fire rod down here. Excellent ferro rod option. Um, he wanted this one on large mollies as well. He said he might carry it on his Hill People Gear chest pack. Hmm. <sighs> Excuse me, folks. <clears throat> so one of the cool things with this is, yes, you, it's set up right now for vertical carry. So I don't know what he's planning on doing. Maybe carrying it center of the chest and trying to, or maybe off to the side and doing like a vertical draw like so. Or he can also change the direction of the, the mollies and have it ride horizontal. So that might be a cool option to be able to just draw across like that. Um, I don't know how I personally feel about putting this onto the molly of a chest pack just because that does then put the knife however much farther away from your body. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to feel in terms of the comfort, the weight distribution, all that good stuff, but I think it's definitely worth a shot and see how it goes. If nothing else, you definitely got good mollies to go on uh, any, any pack that you've got. Now, what you're seeing here, you can see that this is a second, it almost looks like a second sheath. This is what I call my multi-mount plate. The multi-mount plate allows you to use molly locks and it also allows you to use a tech lock. So if you use a tech lock on this thing, you can obviously have it set up horizontal, vertical. I uh, just did those backward obviously, but yeah, you can carry it horizontal, vertically. And then what you can't really see, you can see some of these eyelets in there. They look, if you were to take the two mollies off, these eyelets in here, you'd be like, what is going on? It looks like a football playbook. Um, but what it is, a combination of two things. Number one, it's set up so that your tech lock can work with it at several different angles. And number two, it's set up so that this little D-ring adapter with a three quarter inch spacing on the drill holes can fit onto a whole pile of different places on this plate. So if you take this molly off, if you take the two molly locks off of this, you can fi you'll find that almost all the spacings on here are three quarter inches. I'm sending him these three D-ring adapters 
And what they're meant to do is if he ever decides that he wants to carry this as a chest harness setup, he can just put the molly or sorry, he can put the D-rings on there at the locations that he'd like to, uh, and then run the straps through it, the straps of his harness system, and he could carry it something like this on his chest. You guys have probably seen my chest rigs that I've done. You can carry it, you know, this would be my chosen position. I like this a lot. This is very comfortable to me. Uh, it just kind of feels like a natural angle to draw my knife at. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan. So he could do that, but he could also do it at just about any angle, any ride height on his chest or on his back. So I've actually done one now where the knife sits like this and you draw it up over your shoulder. Uh, I did that for a, a, an Ontario uh, SP53 Bolo, I think it was called, the machete. So anyway, that is just uh, some of the options that exist with these D-rings. Actually, one other really great option. You can, you see the, the two holes right up here. You can put the D-ring adapter up near the top of this thing and run a strap through to carry it as a dangler. You can also then put a D-ring here and here and have set up with those D-rings for running a leg strap. So you can wear this as a drop loop, uh, well really not a drop loop, you can wear it as a dangler or you could convert it to a drop leg setup which is a dangler with a thigh strap. Um, and then uh, you can also put the D-ring adapters here and here and you can carry this as a baldric system by running a two-point rifle sling on it, carry it on a sling under your shoulder, draw across like so. Um, and then the last thing with this plate, there might be some more that I'm not hitting on, but the last thing that comes to mind is that the plate is actually 100% ambidextrous. This whole sheath is ambidextrous. So if you ever decide that you want to switch this up and carry it, um, you know, left-handed, or maybe you're just setting it up to sell it, maybe you decide you're going to sell your honey badger or the sheath or whatever, and you get a left-handed buyer, that's not a problem either. So I try to do that with as many sheaths as I can, set them up so that it is ambidextrous just in case you ever switch it up or gift it or buy it or sell it to someone or whatever. Uh, I want you guys to be covered. I want your bases to be covered. And uh, yeah, just versatility is kind of the name of the game. So even that logo is actually on the opposite side as well. Um, the color scheme here, we've got an OD green base and then using true hide whip texture, which is this fake leather look. Um, and this whip is the black color. So this comes in whip, whiskey, and tequila. Uh, both of those are uh, brownish colors. So <clears throat> the plate itself, and if I can get my camera to focus, I'm not sure if it will. Uh, you can, you can kind of see it. It's a layer of OD, black, and then OD. So it looks like OD on the outside from the flush angle, but you can see that seamless edge with the black in between. That just makes a really thick, super strong plate and uh, still gets you a pretty low profile design. So, all right guys, I think that's it. Uh, I hope I'm not missing anything. I know I rambled on for, for quite a bit longer than I intended to, as usual, but, oh, how about the draw? There you go. So this one, a little bit of a stiffer draw. The double layer adds a little resistance, but it's nothing too bad and also, you will find that if you lift, if you put a little, just a little bit of upward pressure from down here, lifting up, uh, as you push the thumb ramp, it actually draws quite a bit easier. Uh, it just has to do with the geometry of the blade and the fact that there's that hourglass or Coke bottle handle shape. So some of the, the sheath comes back in here, and that's part of the retention process, uh, or retention mechanism, if you will. And then... So putting a little upward pressure helps to actually move that and alleviate the, the pressure inside that little curvature. Nice click in. No rattle, no play. Your knife isn't going anywhere when you need it. Boom. Pretty easy. So all right, guys. If you like these sheaths, if you like these videos, hit that like button. If you like the channel, subscribe. And I would love your thoughts on these three knives. If you hit them in the comments down below, Guys, if you know what kind of tip that is, whether it's drop point, cap art, what you'd even classify this thing as, hit that down below as well. Uh, it's coming almost, almost a Nesimuk, actually. 
Maybe that would probably be my top guess, but I'm not sure. Um, the Hunglis, obviously, and the legendary Dark Timber Honey Badger. This one is Black Micarta with Desert Ironwood. So, all right, guys, if you like the sheets, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for sticking around and listening to me ramble for 20 minutes. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and stick around for the next one. God bless.